My name is Sean Thompson. I'm from Santa Cruz, California. Uh, I'm a carpenter, and I've been watching uh, the skies above me while I'm working uh, fill up with lines and uh, gets overcast. And, uh, you know, me and my kid are skating and uh, out in the driveway, quarter pipe, shirts off, great day, planes go over, we got to put our shirts back on. So I started looking into it myself, and I've been spending about eight years uh, studying this. Patrick Roddy, um, Max Bliss. Uh, I mean, there's so many, so many good, good people out there that are that are putting in the time. Um, before I leave, um, I'd like to say that we're all getting together here to listen uh, to something that we already know. Uh, we're we're all. Just we've, we're talking about the facts of it, and, and we're you know getting off on compartmentalized uh, uh, areas, and I, you know it's good to have the knowledge base. But if we're all here because we know, then uh, we should be talking about how you know we're really going to stop this. Uh, Patrick's idea of the uh, death rates um, due to the the atmosphere and and the exact times, I think it's great. We talked about it last year. It's it's great that he's doing it. Uh, my particular interest right now is the tonnage of material that's being dumped in our atmosphere. Okay, so uh, when it comes down to research, when you research any companies, follow the money. So I went uh, out of the atmospheric research and started going after the actual physical properties. Uh, physical properties are this. These people are using the only thing that they can use the, the cheapest possible way. And it is fly ash. This is the uh, ash that's produced from coal plants. Uh, Duke Energy. Duke Energy has so many lawsuits against them right now for their uh, disposal of fly ash. Uh, they don't know what they did. They they didn't know what to do until the Air Force took care of them. What what happened was uh, Chatham, North Carolina. They were. Uh, trying to dispose fly ash because it's just like fluoride or, or nuclear waste. You can't get rid of it. Its compounds are all oxides. All, all the oxides we're finding in our rainwater samples, all the oxides that we're finding in our soils, same oxides that are in fly ash. When the coal companies found out they could get rid of fly ash at such a cheap rate that the Air Force is going to take it, these companies are going to take it to refine it. They're going to pick it up from, from our, our, our place on train loads. They were happy to hear this because Duke Energy uh, would bury it in, would put it in bladders. And uh, Chatham, North Carolina is a great example. These bladders, they would bury and they would rip open and they contaminate the groundwater and cause cancer. Please don't believe me. Go to Duke Energy and look at how many lawsuits are against them right now with uh, Chatham, North Carolina. Um, so the fact of the matter is, is that they were very happy for Air Force R&D to uh, take, take the rain on this. And uh, this is under the guise of green recycling. That, you know, everybody's so stoked that the military is taking this stuff away and, and we don't have to worry about it anymore but they're just dumping it in our atmosphere. So um, the next time that uh, a lot of people get together, we should start thinking about getting together at one of these corporations, uh, maybe at the distribution railroad line, and stopping these tens and thousands of tons of coal ash going to the Air Force bases, because they are. The distribution of it is real. Uh, and it is tens and thousands of tons. Uh, I was just told about a, a, a railroad car spill in uh, Canada. Um, you know, the authorities wanted to cover that up real quick because it was fly ash. Because the oxides in the soil and, and the lake that where the train crashed, that's real, you know, and the pollution is real. So if we all put our heads together and start going after this fly ash, I know that uh, we can all make a difference by actually finding a few companies to really pick on, to really uh, you know, form a protest. I mean, that's great we're all getting together and talk about the information, but we need to start uh, getting together on the street and stopping the distribution of the materials that are going to these scientists that work at such Air Force bases as Wright-Patterson 
Air Force Base. You know, I mean, this is where the work is done. Uh, fly ash has a, uh, the properties of uh, oxides in it. What are oxides? Oxides are metals. Um, how do they actually spray the metals in the air and then make it work? They have to uh, transmit a beam up to it and it has to resonate. Okay, so it has to, uh, you have to know the frequency of the metals you're spraying into the sky. Meaning, one nanoparticulate, you have to vibrate until you find its resonant frequency when it starts to heat up. You write that number down, and then you refine the rest of the tens and thousands of tons to that resonant frequency. That's the only way they can do this. And, and please, go look, take a look at the technology. It's very real. Uh, Nikola Tesla started this technology. Um, and they're far beyond uh, what we know or have the security clearances to find out. So just the little bit of, uh, of knowledge that I've, I've, I have, um, take a look at uh, C and E N uh, Chemical Magazine. So all you have to do is look at the entire history of uh, these technologies in that magazine, C and E N Chemical Magazine. And uh, you'll find all the information that I found. All righty. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sean. Oh, hey, Matt. I, I want to make one quick, quick, quick comment. Uh, I had another idea which I forgot to mention. If there's any forensic accountants out there listening or watching this, the, the airlines get paid. They freed up all this baggage space and to have all the stuff for the spraying. There's a money trail. Find it. It may not be in the annual report, but if you can find some slush thing, go for it. So, yeah. Thanks. Thank you, Patrick.